Hey guys, I'm Sun. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. Today's episode is about backups. Now, throughout this series, I've talked about how to set up PGP. I've talked about using SSH to connect to servers. I talked about being sovereign and using password managers that only sync locally. Well, all of those things are really good for privacy, but I mean, no one's holding our hands. If we lose our data, we're essentially so backups are really critical. Um, now, I wanna talk about what good backups are. If the information is on your computer and on an external hard drive at home and you're sipping a pina colada at the country house and your house catches fire, well, that's not actually a good backup. A good backup is when the information is not vulnerable to a whole bunch of, of situations such as the house catches fire, your house gets robbed, you're traveling with both your computer and your external hard drive, and then both of those devices get lost. Well, a good backup is when the information is pretty much bulletproof. And one of the best ways of doing that, in my opinion, besides the cloud, more on good ways of doing cloud backups in the future. But for today, the way I really, really prefer things is by backing up the most important files we have on a little USB thumb drive or on a little memory card. Now, doing that is amazing because this can be popped on our keychain and usually we have our keys wherever we are. So if at home we have an external hard drive that's configured using Time Machine and we have our computer and our keys and we're outside of the house, well, that's cool because if both our keys and the computer get stolen, we have that external hard drive with Time Machine at home. Now, if we're out having drinks and our house catches fire and we lose both the external hard drive and the Mac, well, we still have our keys. And by keys, I'm talking about the actual keys to unlock our homes, but also our PGP private keys, our SSH private keys, our passwords, our 2FA tokens, all of this stuff that is so very critical. Now, the problem with having this stuff on a little device that we have with us at all times is if we lose that device, we don't wanna lose our mental health worrying about who's gonna have access to all our stuff. So it's not about putting things on the USB key, it's about putting them in a way where we're using military standard encryption to make sure that if we lose the key, well, we don't really give a f because all of this stuff is encrypted uh, very, very well. Now, the other question is, how can we make sure that the stuff we have on the computer is actually on this? How can we make sure that changes that happen on the computer are synchronized on this? I know people who do backups by manually moving files over from one place to another. That is prone to human error, and I really don't like that. It kind of freaks me out. I'm always worried about like, oh, did I move that file? So in today's episode, we're gonna be setting up a little backup strategy for those very sensitive files using two pieces of open source software. One is Veracrypt. Veracrypt will allow us to create encrypted volumes, which will look like a USB thumb drive, but the data on them will actually be encrypted. Uh, Veracrypt also has features uh, such as hidden volumes to add plausible deniability, that will be the subject of a future episode. The other piece of open source software we're gonna use today is called rsync. rsync is a command line utility that synchronizes a source and a destination to make them identical. So if a file is deleted on the computer, it will also be deleted on the backup. So that is a really good way of creating backups that are identical, but it's not really good if a file is deleted from the, co the computer by error. Uh, that will be the subject of a future episode when we're gonna be implementing backups with versioning. So today, uh, today's episode is for files that you're never gonna delete, such as, again, your PGP keys and your password managers backups and stuff like this. So without further ado, let's let's jump in. Um, first things first, we wanna make sure that we go about installing Fuse. So if we go in, uh, if we go on to Fuse's website and we click on Fuse for Mac, uh, we wanna start by downloading that file. 
and then opening up the uh, DMG archive. All right, and then we just wanna double click on Fuse. <clears throat> Sorry about that, allergy season. Um, okay, so we can go about, uh, you know, going through the wizard. Um, we don't need to enable Fuse for macOS preference pane. Uh, we just want that core components thing so we can go about and do this. Uh, as you guys know by now, my password on this demo computer is super shitty. Yours should be more elaborate. Boom, so that's done. Now the next thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we have uh, PGP installed. So if I go here and I tap, type PGP uh, help, uh, we'll see, whoops, sorry about that, GPG help, uh, we'll see that it is installed. But if it isn't installed on your computer, uh, you can follow steps one to three from uh, the uh, episode on how to encrypt sign and decrypt messages using PGP. Uh, so I'll suppose that you guys have done that in the past. The next thing we want to do is import uh, Veracrypt's uh, public key. Uh, so that's been done. And now we want to go about downloading Veracrypt. So if we go on their website here, we want to download the DMG and the PGP signature. More on this in a second. So we download this and then we download the PGP signature. So I'll be creating an episode uh, in the future about PGP signatures, but essentially that allows a developer that you know develops an app that is sensitive, such as Veracrypt, to sign releases and to have us confirm that the actual author uh, released that DMG. That means if someone wants to attempt a man-in-the-middle attack and has access to their server and puts there like a file like you know, exactly identical, well, they won't be able to sign it. So they won't be able to push a file that has been compromised to us. Uh, so once this has been done, the next step is we want to confirm uh, if the signature is good. And as we can see here, it is good. It's a good signature. Now, the other thing that you guys need to keep in mind is which key was used. But as we did here, we imported the key and it's that key that was used to confirm the signature, so we're good. Uh, the next step is we wanna install Veracrypt. So we just wanna go here and open the uh, Veracrypt uh, DMG. Once this is done, we'll go through the steps. It's very similar to Fuse, so we wanna double click on the installer, and then we go through the wizard. Now again, sorry for the shitty password, demo computer. Okay, good. So that's done as well. The next thing is we want to create a symlink to be able to access Veracrypt using command line and double check that that is actually working. So this is good. Uh, now Veracrypt is accessible via command line. Next step is uh, we're going to be uh, creating a temporary environment variable. So um, I scripted things a bit to make your life easier. So the first thing we want to do is pop in a USB stick uh, into the computer. Oh, I'm missing USB ports here. Okay, let me see. I'll pop it in here. Hopefully that will work. I hadn't planned for this. Um, so once this is done, um, if we pop open the finder, I can see that I have a Samsung bar, uh, you know, volume here. So that's what I'm gonna be using. Uh, now, I am going to be creating the Veracrypt encrypted volume uh, in a way that is a little more stealth. Uh, it's going to be called .b. So I'm doing this because I wanna have a very inconspicuous file on the USB thumb drive. If someone finds it, I don't want it to be called backup or like very important files. I want it to kind of look like nothing important is on it so they just trash it. Um, okay, so, uh, Let's clear this here and I'm going to set backup volume path to the Samsung bar and a file call, uh, called .b. Uh, now it's time to create the encrypted Veracrypt volume. So by running this here, it's going to ask us about the volume type. I mentioned before there's a way of creating volumes that have plausible deniability. That's gonna be in a future episode, but that would be the hidden option here. So we'll go for one. Now. Volume size is important. The way Veracrypt works, it creates an encrypted volume of a fixed size. There is no way, to my knowing anyways, to increase that size in the future 
So you wanna make sure that you leave yourself enough room, but you don't wanna make it overly big because the bigger it is, the more space it takes on the USB thumb drive, and it can potentially slow things down when you're mounting and dismounting it as well. So for the purpose of today's episode, I'm gonna set it to one gigabyte. Now there's a whole bunch of encryption uh, algorithms. AES, which is the default, is actually what the US government uses, but it's also possible to use a whole bunch of different ciphers and also combine them. Uh, but I did a little bit of research and I don't think there's huge gains by using multiple, but if you're really, really uh, worried about things, option seven might be good, but for today's episode, I'll just set it up with one, and I'll use uh, SHA-512 uh, hash algorithm. Now for the file system, that is actually an important decision here. If you guys use FAT, that backup will actually be cross-platform, so you could access it on a computer that's running Windows or Linux, uh, as FAT is very generic and supported by most operating systems. So that being said, FAT has a limit to the, siles, uh, to the size of files, I think it's four gigabytes, and it also has a whole bunch of issues uh, in the context of Mac OS, so if you wanna back up files with specific privileges, uh, things kinda get quirky. So for the purpose of today's episode, I'm just gonna set it up using Mac OS Extended, and now it's time to create a password. Uh, as always, I recommend a passphrase of about six words, some of which do not exist in the dictionary. That will create enough entropy to make that very random and it won't be vulnerable to uh, brute force attacks, dictionary attacks and stuff like this. But for the purpose of today's episode, as I need to type this twice very fast, I'll just put a really, really shitty password. And as you can see here, it actually won't encourage that, so it's gonna tell me it's shitty, but okay, I'm, yeah, I'm aware, shitty password, sorry about that. Uh, there are more advanced ways of securing those uh, volumes even more, uh, but for today's episode, we're just gonna skip this, and now it's time to type a whole bunch of gibberish on the keyboard. So what we're doing here is we're generating some randomness that is going to be used uh, by the encryption algorithm to make sure that it's, unique that it has enough entropy to make it safe. So uh, I'm not sure if I, oh yeah, good, perfect. Uh, so what's happening now is it's actually creating the volume since it's creating it on my USB thumb drive and that thumb drive is not incredibly fast. It will take a little bit of time. So that's also one of the reasons why I didn't wanna do this, uh, you know, for like a four or 16 uh, gigs volume that would have taken even more time. So right now it's writing it. Uh, by the way, since my computer is out of ports, this is plugged into a hub on my monitor. So this will be a little slow. Sorry about that. Maybe I'll fast forward this in post-production. All right, so the volume has been successfully created. Um, now by default, the way volumes are created uh, on Veracrypt, well, volumes that use uh, Mac OS Extended, is that what it was called? Jeez, yeah, Mac OS Extended. They're always named uh, Untitled. So that makes things a little strange. If it was fat, uh, it would be called No Name if my memory is good. So this here is an option, uh, optional step to just rename it to Backup. Uh, now, we wanna start by running this typing in our password, yours should be much more secure than mine. And this little step here uh, will go about renaming it, uh, renaming it, and then we're gonna dismount the volume. Uh, good, okay. Uh, now it's time to create the backup script. Now, some of you will uh, probably uh, say, son, this is super complicated. I wanna use a fat client or essentially an app to select what I wanna backup and things like this. True, but um, command line is super powerful. And once this is configured, you just have to pop open a terminal and run one command. So bear with me. Uh, also, the, the whole point of the privacy guides is to encourage people to really develop their uh, technology literacy and stuff like this. So yeah, and also, I don't know if you guys watch Mr. Robot, but doing stuff in the command line is like way more badass. So anyways, um, okay. So this little command here is used to create that backup script. Whoops, let's scroll this again. Okay, 
Now that this has been done, we need to edit it. And that's where things get really, really nerdy here. So we're using Vim. Vim is a text editor to uh, edit that file using command line. So the first thing here we wanna do is use our cursor to go to a specific location. And then we wanna press I on the keyboard to switch to insert mode. Uh, and then we'll press enter, space, space. And then we're gonna create a little placeholder here for a file. Now, if we pop open Finder and we go into documents, I have an important folder that I wanna add. Now, you guys, by the way, might not have GNUPG or SSH configured on your computer, so you can also remove those. Um, I'll show you guys how to do that in a second. But for this, once the cursor is between those two little quotes, we can just drag it here, drop it, and then it's gonna automatically put the full path and we wanna remove those single quotes. I'm not sure why, why they're there. And once this is done, uh, we could repeat this for as many folders as you guys need, or files, by the way. And, and then we wanna press escape to exit insert mode and say you guys don't have uh, SSH set up on your computer. Okay, well, you would type on, like right now we're not in insert mode, I is insert mode, escape gets out of insert mode. And then when you're on a specific line, if you press on the keyboard DD, it's gonna delete that line. So we just remove that path from our backups. Uh, and then I'll press escape and then, well, actually I need to press escape. Uh, and then I'll press shift on the keyboard and then ZZ to save and exit. Whew, by the way, quick little anecdote. When I started doing computer stuff, I needed to send emails for a client and it took me 36 hours to figure out how to use VI to change port 25 to 2525 on a virtual dedicated server. Who actually, it might've been even a dedicated server back then, but yeah. Uh, so this stuff is a little uncomfortable at first, but it's super powerful once we start, uh, you know, being more agile. So uh, last but not least is how we run those backups. So we pop in the USB stick or the SD card once this stuff is configured and, we, and then we just wanna run sudo backup.sh. That will ask us for the computer password and then for our encrypted volume password and then the magic happens. That's where our sync kicks in and it will synchronize, synchronize files. So I coded this little script in a way where it asks us to inspect the backup and that's super important because sometimes when you have encryption stuff it can fa fail silently and then you know you can lose access to the backup so if i pop open the finder you see as i mentioned earlier the encrypted volume will look essentially the same as a usb stick it's called backup now i can go in here and use on the keyboard the keys command shift dot to show uh, you know, hidden files. And then if I go here, we can see that the GNU PG, uh, you know, file or folder, I should have said is there. We also have this very important folder. And in library, we have all of the keychain data. Keychain is the password manager that ships with Mac OS. Um, yeah, so if we go back to our uh, terminal here and press enter, it will eject or dismount the encrypted volume and we're done. Uh, so now we can go about ejecting our USB stick the way we would always do it and voila. We now have on this little USB stick a military grade encrypted uh, volume or backup of those very sensitive files and this is waterproof. It fits on a keychain. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty badass. Uh, so, okay, quick little note here. I'm bouncing ideas with myself on how I could monetize the privacy guides. I'm not trying to make money uh, in a nasty way. I'm just trying to find a way of being, being able to like sustain myself, to be able to spend more time doing this research. So I'm uh, playing around with Amazon affiliate links. So I'll link to this uh, and the little uh, SanDisk card in the description. Those are gonna be affiliate links when you click on them it can potentially give me a commission. Uh, if you're uncomfortable with this, let me know in the comments. Uh, I don't think this actually invades your privacy as you guys are probably already using 
uh, Amazon if you're going to be clicking on those links. So let me know. Uh, and by the way, I will never, ever, ever, ever recommend products that I don't use myself, that I don't really value. So this is not becoming a commercial uh, enterprise. I am not going to start doing NordVPN promotion shit on my channel. I'm not going to recommend retarded products. I actually, you know what? If you know how to buy this at a local store, well, fuck Amazon and buy it locally because that's way better for the planet. So anyways, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for caring about privacy and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.